No one could read the Bible. Sandy Jasper, Mr. Ashby's coachman, was the preacher. He would go to the White Baptist Church on Sunday. Wait a minute. So now the pastor would go to the White Church on Sunday and do what? With the family uh -huh. and would be better informed and would be better what? Better informed because he heard the white preacher. Ooh. Right. So now it's the same thing today. He go to seminary school. Right. Your pastor went to seminary school and learned his garbage religion from his slave master. Right. All false doctrine. Right. Right. All feel good religion. All song and dance. Shuck and jive. Right. right. It's not the truth according to the Bible. What day is the Sabbath day? What day is the Sabbath day? That's what we want to deal with. Y'all come to church on Sunday. Why are y'all coming to church on Sunday? Right, right. Pastor McCarthy, what day, Joshua 6, what, what day, day is, is the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day? day? One more time. What, what day is the Sabbath, Sabbath day? Sunday is not the Sabbath day. That's right. You learned that from your slave master in slavery. Right. You're still following this slave religion. We gotta come out of this foolishness. Right. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. You so-called Negroes are from the tribe of Judah. Right. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. There's no African American in the Bible. Give me Revelation 21. That's right. When you deal with the gates in the kingdom of heaven, it's only for the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Read that. The book of Revelation. Chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall great and high. Come on. And had 12 gates. The kingdom of heaven has 12 gates. That's right. It's 12 gates to the kingdom of heaven. Pastor, the Bible says it's 12 gates into the kingdom of heaven. Let's see what's on the gates. Read on. And at the gates, 12 angels and names written thereon. There's names written on those gates. That's right. There are names written on the gates into the kingdom of heaven. Read on which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You see that? The names on the, on the gates are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's right. Guess what? African American ain't on gates. Right. African American is not on the gate into the kingdom of heaven. Right. You gotta know what tribe you come from. Right. You guys are not learning the truth in this church. What tribe do you come from? What nation do you come from in the Bible? Read it again. And at a wall great and high, and at 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, yeah. and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Yeah, that's right. right. I guarantee you, you have no clue what a tribe is. Right. You coming to this church, think you so-called Negroes still, right. blacks, African Americans, right. Haitians, Jamaicans, so forth and so on, Puerto Ricans. Y'all are the Israelites according to the Bible. Right, you have right. not learned the truth. You're not being taught the truth. You're learning this old slave religion. Right. Old song and dance, shuck and jive. That garbage. Now, I want to get some out of this book real quick. Open it up. Give me, um, keep going. Bring it out! Bring right, it out. read it. The, the book, When I Was a Slave, page 75. No one on the place was taught to read or write. This is a slave memoir. Slaves spoke about what they went through in slavery. It says no one what? No one on the place was taught to read or write. We were not taught to read and write in slavery. Read on. On Sunday, uh -huh. the slaves who wanted to worship would gather at one of the large cabins um, with one of the overseers. Which right. one of the overseers present? You had a slave master present on Sunday when they came to worship. Read on. And had their church, after which the overseer would talk. When communication was given, the overseer was paid for standing there with half of the collection taken up. Right, and that's why you still got, you got one overseer still in the congregation right now. Okay, we have one slave master still present in the church today. That's why they still do that. Okay. You always had one slave master that watched over the congregation right, to keep right. that slave religion going. Right, right. Read it again. It says, when, when chameleon was given, the overseer was paid for staying there with half the collection taken up. Sometimes he would get 25 cents. No one could read the Bible. No one could what? No one could read 
the Bible. That's why y'all don't know what Jesus looks like. Right. Y'all probably got an image of white Jesus in the church. Right. Christ right. is not a white man. Right. Jesus is black with woolly hair. Right. What scripture is that? What scripture? Y'all have no clue. Read it again. No one could read the Bible. Sandy Jasper, Mr. Ashby's coachman, was the preacher. He would go to the White Baptist Church on Sunday. Wait a minute. So now the pastor would go to the White Church on Sunday and do what? With the family and would be better informed. And would be better what? Better informed because he heard the white preacher. Right. So now it's the same thing today. He go to seminary school. Right. Your pastor went to seminary school and learned this garbage religion from his slave master. Right. Right. And then come back and teach it to y'all. Y'all don't know y'all the Israelites according to the Bible. Right. You so-called Negroes are the Israelites. You have right. to repent and keep God's commandments. Right. We went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. Right. That's, right. That's why we went into slavery. For breaking God's commandments. Now you got to come back to God's commandments. Right. One of them is remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Sunday is not the Sabbath day. That's right. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week. And in what? The midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So now, many of you may not have a clue what this is talking about. The Bible says, in the midst of the week. He shall cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. What is that talking about? Christ dying in the middle of the week. Christ died in the middle of the week. He did not die on Friday. That's the end of the week. That's the sixth day of the week. Christ died in the midst of the week. What day is in the middle of the week? Wednesday, so-called Wednesday. Christ died on a Wednesday and he rose Saturday. Not on Sunday. That's why John said he would be in the, in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. That's right. Read it again. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Right, and it's telling us what law Christ did away with. Sacrifices and oblations. That's right. Not the other commandments. You still got to keep a bed on your face, Pastor. You still got to go hell in your head if you can grow it. Right. You still got to wear fringes on your garments. Right. You still got to keep Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. Right. Right. You understand? Go to John. Give me that in John. Come on. The book of John, chapter 12, verse 39. Bring it out. Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, he have blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart. So this is prophetic. Many of you, your eyes have been blinded. The Most High is not waking you up to the understanding, but that's why he sent prophets out to teach you, that's to right. wake you up. Read it again. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. So my sister, did you hear that? You hear that scripture? Oh, I did. I just came up. Read that again. The book of John, chapter 12, verse, th verse 40, verse 39. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again. It says, therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah is Isaiah. You remember Isaiah in the Bible? Isaiah said what? He had blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. What do you think that's talking about? Isaiah prophetically said the, the Most High would blind the eyes of the people that they should not hear or see. What do you think that's talking about? You don't know. Guess what? This church, you got churches all around these blocks. They don't understand what's in this Bible. He had blinded their eyes that they should not see. You know why? Because they don't keep God's commandments. Get Psalms 111 and 10. Let's show it. Let's show it. The correlation. Your eyes are blinded if you're not doing a particular thing. I'm going to show you. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. Watch this. A good understanding. A good understanding of the Bible. Have all they that do his commandments. You see that? So how do you have a good understanding according to that? If you do the commandments, right? 
But guess what they teach you in the church? The commandments are done away with. The, the laws of God are done away with. You ever heard that? Yes, they teach you that. So guess what? God blind their eyes. They don't know what's going on in this Bible. You understand? It's all false doctrine. What? All feel-good religion. All song and dance, shuck and jive. What? It's not the truth according to the Bible. So what about you? Where, where you come from? You, you, go, you go to the church? Go to a church in Lillington. In Lillington. What's the denomination? All denominations. All, you said all? For, for everyone. It's free, for everyone? Yeah. Okay. Free will, really free will Baptist. Okay, there you go. Baptist. Free. So now let's think about it. Let's think about the term. The, the title of the church is called what? Free will Baptist. Free will Baptist. Wow. So you can do whatever you want as a Baptist. That's basically what you're saying, right? Right. No. So what does free will mean? What does free will mean, my sister? That you're free to, to do what you want to do. There you go. So in other words, the laws of God are done away with. Bring it out. You understand? But now, let's take the term Baptist. What does the Baptist mean? Where they get that from? You see that? We have no clue what we, what we do in the church. Why is it called that? What does it mean? So forth and so on. There was, a, there was a prophet in the Bible called John the Baptist. You remember him? John the Baptist. Why was he called John the Baptist? Let's get it. Let's get it. Wake him up. Huh? Okay. Yeah, right, right, right. So look. Does it have um, Baptist? Yes, right. John Smith. So now, man-made religions, right? The so-called Baptist religion was created by John Smith in 1608. Right. Okay? The Mormon religion, Joseph Smith, 1830. Right. All right? Seven-day Adventist, Ellen G. White, in 1863. Bring it out! Right? You might take pictures. Nah, 100%. The Jehovah's Witness religion was created by Charles T. Russell, or Charles Taz Russell, right. in 1872. The Pentecostal religion, which most of these Negroes, if it's not Baptist, it's Pentecostal, was Charles Parham in 1901. All of these are slave religions, man-made right. religions. Right. Not one of these are in the Bible. Right. right. Now, read. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 5. Verse 4, and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. The same who? The same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. And they went out unto him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him. And were what? And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So now. They went to John to be baptized, and they confessed their sins. Right. Right? So that's why he was called John the Baptist. Right. Because he did what? He baptized. Right. So are you a Baptist? You're not a Baptist. Right. You don't baptize nobody. Right? Now, John chapter 4 and verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. So now, what this is saying is Jesus the Christ baptized more people than John did, right? But watch this. But Jesus, though Jesus himself baptized not. Though Jesus himself never dipped anybody in the water. Right. He baptized more people than John, but he never dipped anybody in water. Right. Right? Come on. But his disciples. But his disciples did, because many of them came from John. They learned from John. Right. So why do you think Christ never dipped nobody in water? I don't know. You don't know, right? I'm curious to know. Right. Get John 3. That's what I wanted the next one. John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase. This is John speaking. He must increase, but I must decrease. What, is he, what do you think he's talking about? He must increase, but I must decrease. This is John speaking about Christ. What do you think he's talking about? Meaning what? Baptism is not the true way. Right. Baptism is not necessary for salvation. Right. Christ never dipped anybody in water at all. That's right. But he taught them. He taught them. Give me that. Yes, sir. And John, now you're clean. John, chapter 15 and verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I spoken unto you. You see that? Now you are clean how? 
through the word. So Christ baptized more people than John by teaching them, teaching them correctly. John just came to pave the way to Christ. Right. But once Christ came on the scene, John said he must increase, I must decrease. Meaning his ministry of baptizing people was going to be gone, done, done away with, no longer needed. You understand? Y'all back. Okay, so what we're going over now is she, she goes to a what's called a free will Baptist church. Y'all ever heard of those? What does that mean to y'all? Uh, basically, I mean, basically the same thing that they do here. Free will. It's just free will. What a, free yeah, will. right. It's not com connected to... There's no laws being yeah. taught in that church. Yes, right. No laws at all. Now, as you were coming up, before you were coming up, y'all y'all left away. The Bible told us that Christ died in the midst of the week. Did y'all ever heard that before? Let's read that again. Sir. Daniel 9. Let's go back to that. Because the re that's, that's important because that's reaffirming what they were supposed to properly worship God. What day the seventh day actually is. Read it again. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Now that's it. This is prophetic. It says, in the midst of the week, he would cause the sacrifices, sacrifices and oblations to cease. Right? Christ was the ultimate what? What did they tell us? ultimate sacrifice, right? It said that happened in the midst of the week. What day is in the middle of the week? Wednesday, Wednesday right? So how could Christ, the Bible tells us what, what day he died on. Why are we worshiping Good Friday? Where Good Friday come from? Right? That's garbage. That's not in the Bible. Christ died in the midst of the week. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Do you see that? So Christ is telling us, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, I remember that, that, that's history. So shall the Son of Man, meaning Christ, will be three days and three, three nights in the heart of the earth. So now, if he died on Wednesday, what's three days and three nights after Wednesday? Saturday. There you go. What? There you go. So now, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. So watch this. That's Saturday. Watch this. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Y'all ever heard this before? This is, this is what they quote unquote trying to use resurrect, resurrection Sunday, right? But it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. What day is the first day of the week? Sunday. That's how if he died on Wednesday, three days and three nights, he was in the heart of the earth, he rose late Saturday, then Sunday they came, he was already gone. Right. But he rose on Saturday. Right. Late Saturday evening. That's when he rose. That's right. Because he died late Wednesday evening. That was three days and three nights later, it'd be Saturday. Right. Christ did not rise on Sunday. And how can you get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday? Right. So Good Friday is garbage, Easter Sunday is garbage. What? That's not in the Bible. What? You understand? Read it again. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So they came to see the sepulcher, right? Come on. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became his dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus. Fear not, for I know you seek Jesus, the Messiah. Read on. Who was crucified? Who was crucified three days ago? You know? He is not here. He is not here. Remember, this is the first day of the week. He is not here. Go ahead. For he is risen, as he said. As he said. That's what I wanted. He is risen, as he said. Three days and three nights, he was going to rise after that time. So he was letting them know he's already gone now. You see what I'm saying? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live
on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over, all over all the land unto the ninth hour. Now, this is key. It says, this. remember, this is, this is the day Christ was uh, crucified on, right? Which is what day? What, what day? So-called Wednesday, right? In the middle of the week. It says, from what again? Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, it was darkness over all the land. Now, why, what is the sixth hour? What is the sixth hour? That's what we would think, right? No, it's not. It's mentioning the sixth hour, it was darkness over all the land because the sixth hour is actually 12 o'clock during that time. Right. 12 noon. The, the ninth hour is 3 p.m. Right. So you had what's called, you had time phases, right? You had the first hour, third hour, so forth and so on. But it was three, three hour cycles, okay? So the days start in the evening time. You understand? So just to make it simple, at 12 o'clock, it was dark. That's why I was mentioning that. You see what I'm saying? Is it normal to be dark around 12 o'clock? No, because it, an important event was about to happen. So there was an eclipse that happened. It got dark over all the earth from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Read it again. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So Christ died after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was dark over all the land. Because that event was a very special day. You see what I'm saying? That's why the Bible mentions it was darkness there. Because it's not normal to be dark during daylight hours. You see what I'm saying? So that happened during that time. So now, hey, my brothers, what? They got a question? Y'all got a question, brothers? What did they, what did they say? Huh? Y'all want to buy us cheeseburgers? Okay, I got you. I got you. Hey, brothers, listen. Matthew 4 and 4. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Listen to this right here. Matthew 4 and 4. Watch this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said. Listen, that's our people. We ready to eat. We ready. As soon as we ready to eat, forget everything else. Watch this. But he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Christ said we should not live on bread alone, read on. But every word. No, some words. Every word. Just the New Testament. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see that? So we should not live on bread alone. Didn't you eat already today? No. You didn't eat today. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm Guess what? You're not going to die. You ate, you ate yesterday, right? Yeah, I did. Fasting is good. Right. Intermittent fasting is good. It's good for you. True, I do fast. You do fast. That's good for you. It's, it's very healing to the body. Right. So you're not going to die. Trust me. Christ fasted for how long? How, how long Christ fast for? 40 days. And 40 okay, so you're not going to die. You, you're going to be all right. Read it again. <laughs> but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So now, did Christ just make that up? Did he just throw that out of thin air? Get Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Watch this. The, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8 and verse 3. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Wait a minute. Christ quoted what Moses said in Deuteronomy. Right. Read it. Go back to that again. Matthew 4. Watch this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. You see that? That's why he said, it is written. It is written. What is he? He's quoting something that's written a four time. You see that? So Christ referenced the Old Testament. He taught from the Old Testament. Right. There was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Christ walked the earth. You understand that? There was no quote unquote New Testament, as they say. Christ always called, he taught out of the Old Testament. That's right. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, that's what he taught from. Right. So we see him right now quoting 
Moses. He's qu quoting Moses' writing. You understand? Do y'all read the Old Testament in the Free Will Baptist Church? Yeah? What do y'all read out of there? No, no. We, we, I think we read. Say again? NIV version. Okay, but do you read out of the quote unquote Old Testament? Oh, yeah. You do? Uh -huh. Get Numbers 1538. Let's see. Because I was going to reference this earlier. Watch this. Numbers 1538. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them. Now, this is Moses. Remember, Christ quoted Moses, right? So this is not done away with. He says, speak unto the children of Israel. Who are the children of Israel? My sister. You don't know. So now, I want you to look at this sign. The children of Israel. Israel. Who are the children of Israel today? You don't know. What, what about you? What's your nationality? What's my nationality? Yes. African-American. African-American. Now, African-American is not a nationality. No. Where does the term Africa come from? This is what this is what I'm saying. I, I guarantee you, most of our brothers and sisters in the church think they're African American. That does not exist in the Bible. Right. The term I'm gonna tell you, the term Africa comes from a white man named Leo Scipio Africanus. Right. Okay. America comes from another white man, Amerigo Vespucci. So we say, oh, we're African American. We come from Africa. We live in America. That's not a nationality. That's two land masses. You see what I'm saying? We were taught that in slavery. Actually, it came later in the in 1980s under Jesse Jackson. They passed him that, and he taught us that. Yo, you're African Americans now, okay? But if you call, if you call yourself that, you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Look at the sign right there. Bring it out. The so-called American blacks. You're from the tribe of Judah. The West Indian blacks, so forth and so on. Benjamin, Haitians are Levi according to the Bible. Right. So this, the nation of Israel, are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. right. Those that went through the slave trade and, and the diaspora throughout the four corners of the earth. Right. So now, read that again. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. So now, this is specific. Speak unto the children of Israel. You didn't know that prior to today, right? So now, when we read this, if, if you open the Bible and read that, you're like, well, that ain't talking about me. Right. What do you think? You're a Gentile? They taught you were a Gentile? What did they teach you in the church? Right, they never tell you what you are. This, right. this is the problem with the churches. Right. They don't tell you who you are. So now this stuff doesn't apply to you if you don't know who you are. But you are of the children of Israel. Let me ask you something. Did your forefathers and foremothers go into slavery? No. They didn't. Where are you from? Dunn. You from Dunn? Originally? Yeah. Bun Levin. Bun Levin, right? Bun Level, Bun -level right. Bun so, so you don't know anything about slavery. So this stuff right here, right? Our people having yokes of iron on their necks, being whipped in the cotton fields, sold on slave ships. That's not your, your history. Your, your forefathers and foremothers. What's your, what's your last name? Spears. Huh? Spears. Spears. How you get that last name? It was given to me by my mother and father. Where they get it from? I have no idea. The slave owner. The slave master, my sister. Right. The slave master gave us our, our last names. Like, you got the, the name Johnson, right? That's John's son. Right. If they wasn't born in slavery, then I did slavery. It's still your blood. What do you mean they weren't born in slavery? You talking about your, your actual parents? Yeah. Yeah, but we're going back centuries, oh, okay. right? Great, -grandma, great grandmothers, great grandfathers, and so forth. Okay. They didn't go into slavery? They probably did. Uh, they did. I, I'm, I'm guarantee you they did. That's right. right. Because this Bible is a true book. That's right. You see what I'm saying? But my point is... You have to know who you are according to the Bible for this stuff to apply to you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.